Today is another Con My Method decluttering video. My name is Mai, and I am Marie Kondo's not as talented, but still efficient in my own way cousin. I have been decluttering my life little by little over the last several months. I've been working through the KonMari categories and reached the miscellaneous portion, which feels like about 99% of my house. So this category of miscellaneous has about 100 subcategories for me. I recently decluttered the subcategory of my miscellaneous disaster pantry and now I get to focus on my actual kitchen and all the pots, pans, appliances, and random miscellaneous stuff that has accumulated over years and years and years and years. <laughs> Basically I am decluttering the utter mess that I hide in the cabinets and drawers throughout my kitchen and I will organize it after so it's not spilling out and is actually convenient and useful. But before we get to organize the next step of the KonMari method that I always follow is pulling everything out and putting it in into one place. And while I'm pulling everything out, looky here. We have come across my collection of Brewmate Insulated Drinkware, who is today's sponsor, and in doing so, they are sponsoring my children's future education. Brewmate makes insulated can coolers and drinkware for all your drinking needs in super cute styles, might I add. I love this matte black with leopard gloss contrast hopsolator slim that fits my 12 ounce skinny cans perfectly. With Brewmate's triple layer construction, there is zero condensation and it keeps my drink perfectly chilled. There are tons of other designs and colors to choose from on their site, and they have lots of other products as well if the beverages you drink aren't in slim cans. Like their Hopsolator Trio that fits standard 12 ounce beverages and 16 ounce beverages, insulated wine gift sets, and more. I'll leave a link in the description below so that you can check them out yourself, and I will also have a discount code noted in the description below that is active for 48 hours from the time that I post this video. Thanks again to Brewmate for sponsoring this video and here's a little clip of my kids saying thank you. Thank you Brewmate. I figured I would insert that because really all the money's going to them. Back to the video and pulling everything out and getting it into one place. Before I start taking everything out, I always ponder, like, do I really need to take everything out, pile it into one place? Can't I just work like drawer by drawer, cabinet by cabinet, whatever? It seems like it would be so much easier to just work section by section, but through doing so many of these videos, I really see the value in taking everything out now. It really forces you to see everything you have in a category and you see that you have at least in my case, a lot. If I personally did section by section, I don't think I would get rid of nearly as much, but when I look at a giant pile of stuff, if I'm on the fence about something, it's like, come on, Mike, just freaking donate it. Plus, I clearly don't have a good organization system going on now, so once we are done letting things go, I can see everything that I am keeping and thus better plan how to organize and put everything away. Okay, I'm out of counter space, so I'm just gonna be putting stuff on the floor now. <laughs> Okay, so we have everything out right now. Well, kind of everything. Admittedly, 70% of everything is cleared out and put on the countertops or the floor right now, but I didn't even realize how much stuff I had in all of these cabinets and drawers, and I'm out of space. So what I have out right now, for the most part, is pots, pans, appliances, small appliances, cookware, bakeware, serveware, that type of stuff I have all out right now, and we will work through the declutter process. So this is the famous Sparks Joy portion of the KonMari method, but this is the KonMai method. And in a way, I could argue in circles with myself that all of this could potentially spark joy in me because it is used to make food, which sparks joy in me. But I cannot hold on to everything. So what I'm really thinking about in this discarding process is number one, have I used this item in the last year? If I have not, clearly I don't really need it. And number two, do I have an excessive amount of duplicates of this item? I can already tell you right now, I have three, four, sometimes five of very similar or the same item, which is obviously excessive. So the extras can just be donated. I realize sometimes I will want to 
value of an item because if I'm cooking a big meal of some sort, I might want two spatulas or two tongs, something like that. There are certain things that do call for multiples, but in the instance where I'm pretty sure I have five or six soup ladles, like I'm not running a soup kitchen, so I do not need five or six ladles. I can get rid of pretty much all of them except for one. And actually, before I start discarding stuff, I'm going to quick clean out all of the cabinets and drawers that are now empty because with so little freed up space, I'm pretty sure as I decide to keep things, I might just start putting them where they belong and I want everything to be clean when it goes back into its place. In the scramble of putting everything up, I lost track of the thing that I normally attach to the end of my little hand vac, the more pointy thing that I use to clean out the cabinets, but this'll do for now. I'm spraying everything clean with my Pledge multi-purpose cleaner and my microfiber cloths that I get at Target. Everything will be linked below. This drawer that held all the pots and pans was particularly dirty. Just wiping it down wasn't quite enough to get it looking clean, so I'm using a magic eraser to get all the scuff marks out and it worked really well. As of right now, I am starting with two donate bins to hold things, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be getting rid of a lot of this stuff. I'm going to need more than two of these plastic laundry bins, but this is what we're starting with. I got my donate bin right next to me and we can get started. I know where to begin. This electric skillet is the perfect example of how and why this kitchen got so cluttered and out of control. Just we, First off, I haven't done a thorough kitchen declutter ever in my life. And I have been accumulating kitchen things since I moved out of my parents' house. So all my college stuff, like this electric skillet, is still in our inventory, even though it has not been used in almost 10 years because I don't think I've used it since I went to college. My living situation when I was in college was, I feel like, probably pretty standard compared to most people's college experiences. I didn't, I wasn't flush with cash by any means. I lived in an unfinished basement with my boyfriend and we didn't have like a kitchen to ourselves. So we had this electric skillet to help us make our food and stuff so that we didn't always have to go to the community kitchen. But I have an actual stove now, <laughs> now that I have a home. So this is just going to go in the donate area. Everything's really messy. I think what I'm going to do next is I'm gonna get all the pots and pans in this space right here so that I can figure out what I have duplicates of and think about what I actually need. Okay, I think we can all agree again. I definitely do not need this many pots and pans. First thing I think I'm gonna do here is I'm going to find which pots and pans have lids and kind of just see everything that I have. We very rarely use cast iron pans, so we really don't need two. I'm just gonna keep the bigger one for the situation that we use it to make I don't know, the rare, extremely rare, once in a blue moon, red moon, rainbow moon occasion that I make filet mignon. I'll keep this one, but we don't need this second one. Okay, I know that this is still probably an excessive amount of pots and pans, maybe as I become more talented and more like my cousin Marie Kondo, but right now I am still just Mai, and this is the Kan Mai method, and this is all I can force myself to part with from the pots and pans category right now. So let's put this in the drawer. So these are the everyday ones that, if I'm being honest, if I was a true minimalist, I could, I could survive with just this. But I'm not quite minimalist status yet. So the items we use probably on a monthly basis, I'm putting down here. We have our lid holding area right here, so I'm gonna put all the glass lids in there. 
Okay, continuing on through stuff. We definitely use this waffle maker, so I'm gonna keep this. Onion chopper, gotta keep that. Otherwise, I cry off all of my makeup anytime I chop an onion. This is a definite keep. I need to find an area to store all my cookbooks. I don't have that many, but I'm a self-proclaimed proud basic bee. I'm anything that's like popular at the time, I usually jump on the bandwagon because in my mind, it's popular for a reason, because it's awesome. So when Fifty Shades of Grey was a popular book, I read them, got into them, my husband thought it was hilarious, and he decided to give me this cookbook, Fifty Shades of Chicken. <laughs> It has like some decent recipes, but it's very Fifty Shades of Grey-esque. And like the names of the recipes are also very suggestive. <laughs> I'll, I'll link this. Next, we have a lot of Tupperware, Snapware, food storage containers, whatever you wanna call them. But we have just a ton. So let me work to collect them into one place, figure out what has matching components, what doesn't. I'll then have to figure out how much do we actually need and figure out how to keep and store it properly so that I don't lose everything in the future. <laughs> Right off the bat, these flimsy Ziploc ones, I'm, I'm gonna get rid of because we never use them. They don't reliably stay together if I put them in my kids' lunch boxes for the day. Next, I'm getting rid of these Rubbermaid ones. The lids don't reliably stay on. So these like little mini size ones that are meant for lunch boxes are gonna go donate because I just can't trust the lids. My absolute favorite Tupperware to use in my kids' lunch boxes, I got from Target. I'm pretty sure it's up and up. I'll, I'll have it linked below. But I love these little circular bowls for my kids' lunch boxes because it has a twist on lid. And so it doesn't matter how rough my boys are as they're swinging their lunch boxes around as they walk into school. But this isn't going anywhere. The lid doesn't pop off. It has to be unscrewed. And so I've never had an issue with spills in lunch boxes with these. So these are my absolute favorite. I have three here. Three are in the washing machine right now. And they've held up for well over a year at this point. By washing machine, I mean dishwasher. I do keep quite a few of these plastic storage containers. It might seem like an excessive amount, but if we have a ton of like chili leftovers or something at our house, I'll pre-fill up six of these, stick it in the fridge, and then throughout the week, put them in my boys' lunch boxes. Okay, so this is what I am keeping for the Tupperware. We have the large rectangle Tupperware containers there with lids, the medium size ones there with lids, and then the lunchbox size ones there with their appropriate lids. And then we got a lot to donate over on this side. Next we have all of the strainers, mixing bowls, and then other random miscellaneous stuff. Cause really this, all of this seems so miscellaneous to me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven strainers. And then I guess this rice strainer. I'm going to keep these two squishy ones because they take up so little space. And then I'm gonna keep this one because it's just cute and looks pretty. I'm still gonna have three strainers. It might seem like a lot, but we use strainers every day, multiple times a day in my house. I'll strain random things, like if I boil hot dogs or something random, boil meatballs for my kids, I'll use this strainer so that I don't have to use tongs to pick them out. So I'm keeping three strainers. I feel like I'm explaining this in excess and really I just want three strainers. So I'm keeping these three. Oh, and I, I'm also keeping my little rice strainer. Next, I have so many bowls. Right away, I'm going to get rid of these glass ones because I never use them. And then it's a matter of how many of these stainless steel bowls do I really need? I first am going to say I absolutely love these stainless steel bowls. They have a nice silicone rubber bottom. If my sons decide that they wanna help me in my baking adventures, they can help mix it up with a spatula and I'm not worried about the bowl sliding all over underneath of them because this nice sticky base. 
I just have a lot of them. So let me organize them a little. These two are the exact same size to the point that they're hard to pull apart when they're together. So I'm only going to keep one of them. I'm getting rid of these two duplicates and then these, while it might seem like it's still a lot of bowls, they're all different sizes and they all fit together so nicely that I feel fine with keeping all these. Okay, we took care of the floor items. And I've already completely filled up both of these laundry bins with stuff. So let me get a few other laundry bins and then we will continue with what is still remaining on all the counters. Let's keep going right away. These are going to be donated. These were like sitting on top of our fridge. Multiple people have gifted my boys t-ball sets and what always ends up happening is these just become weapons and my boys start hitting each other, someone gets hurt. So I resorted to just storing them on top of my fridge, which isn't a good storing spot when it should just be something we donate and get rid of because my boys obviously don't know how to play nice. So these are donate. <laughs> this, I don't know why, we don't even use Ziploc freezer bags. I mean, on a rare occasion, I'll maybe use them for packing to help separate my boys' clothes to make it easy, but that's very rare, especially recently. We haven't traveled in a long time, so I'll keep the one that's already open. The one that has never been opened, I'm donating. I don't need three pie things. I really only need one, so I'll keep this one. Another pie thing, don't need this. These items, I have three of them. I'm gonna get rid of that larger one, but I'm keeping these two. These are really nice to have if you have kids that consistently get hurt and are very klutzy like my kids. But they're the old fashioned little ice packs that if you watch any old cartoons or TV shows and someone is hurt or sick, they have like the thermometer in their mouth and they have this resting on their head to like heal them or cool them off. But these are really nice. Anytime your kids get a boo-boo, the top screws off, you fill it with water and ice, screw this back on, and the outside is already coated in a cloth material, so you don't need to wrap a paper towel or anything around it. You don't need to get a Ziploc bag out. Everything you need, plus ice and water, is right here to help your kids feel better. I don't know exactly how I'm going to organize everything yet in the remaining drawers and cabinets, so I'm just leaving it out for now, but I know I'm keeping all this. Next, let's work through this area. These are all my microfiber cleaning cloths. I really like these. I'm keeping all of them. Whenever I do an extreme cleaning, I always go through all of these and have to wash all of them, so I'm not parting with any of these. Oh, these I don't need anymore. I, I feel like I'm almost out of this stage and anything that does need to be baby proofed is already baby proofed in my house but these are just extra baby proofing supplies that i never never used up and i really like these ones what is this for does anyone know i have no idea and i've never used it. Some of these sharp things, I don't want anyone to get hurt. So I'm putting anything that I'm getting rid of that's really sharp in a separate paper bag so that it's just known to be very careful with that bag. I don't want anyone trying to lift a really heavy bag and then have something really sharp poke out of it. I can get rid of both of these apple slicers that just cut them into eight slices because I much prefer using this 16 apple slice slicer. It cuts them into the perfect size for my young boys, so I'm keeping this one solely. Keeping this as well, this is my grape quarterer. Grapes are a very dangerous food for young kids, and so this helps quarter them so that they're not a choking hazard. 
I have so many cutting boards and I really just don't need them anymore because I've consolidated all my cutting boards to, I'll overlay it because it's currently covered up in a bunch of crap right now, but I now just have one cutting board that has multiple cutting board sheets within it. And I keep it out on my counter at all times because I use it all the time. And as it gets dirty, I can just pull out clean sheets from within it. I don't have to store all these other ones everywhere. Let's take a look at all these utensils. So there are certain things that I do want multiples of. I want two pairs of tongs, but what I'm going to do is instead of having both of these out on my counter, I'm just going to have one of these out with one utensil of each that I consistently use, and then the spares are going to go into this drawer. What the heck? I have more. I have more gallon freezer bags. I'm trying to think of a time in my life where I felt like I needed four huge packs of freezer bags and I cannot, I can't, I can't think of it. So I'm gonna donate this one. This one's already open, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with this one. All of our kinetic sand I'm going to keep. I'm setting it to the side because it really just goes in our arts and crafts and kids area, not in the kitchen. Okay, we're so close to being done to clearing off these counters. This is the hand sanitizer that we use throughout my house. So this is just like the larger size refill that I use in all these little hand pumps. My Nutribullet. I use this every other day, sometimes every single day of the week, but really, I mean, I do I do the dishes. So yeah, I'm only keeping, I'm keeping these. Probably don't need four. Maybe in the future I'll consolidate it down to two, but for now I'm gonna see how it goes keeping four. I'm getting rid of all of these weird lid things that came with it because truthfully I don't use it. I don't blend something and then put a lid on and take it to go like this. I like to sip and savor my smoothies when I have them. So I always transfer it from this to one of these Brewmate insulated cup. I always transfer it to an insulated cup. This is my favorite. Isn't it so pretty? So pretty. But my exact matcha smoothie recipe, it fits perfectly in this. So I always use this. So I'm gonna get rid of all of these. All right, so right now, I usually always have my Nutribullet plugged in here, and then my Instapot is plugged in right behind it. So I'm gonna put both of these down in this cabinet just so that it can be off of the countertop. Next, I have just some of what remains in the baking and serveware category, and I'm going to put it in here. I know that I so rarely use this, but spring is coming up, it's almost Easter, so this is prime time for me to get use out of this, making deviled eggs, so I'm keeping this for now. This cabinet I saved. I didn't want to remove all of this, put it all over the counter with everything else, because I was fairly certain if I did that, like something would for sure fall and break and glass would be everywhere, and I didn't want that to happen. So I left everything in here for now. I'm going to empty all of this bottom shelf out, but all of these glasses, I'm going to make my assessments in here because there's a lot. I can definitely get rid of half of these. I'm not running a freaking winery out of my house, but we're working through this one a little bit differently just because I don't want my house to turn into like the Home Alone house with booby traps and glass everywhere. All of this popcorn, like there's so much popcorn, I'm just right away gonna put it in here. Okay, poll down in the comments. I really wanna know, how many wine glasses does one need? We don't have any family who lives near us, so it's not like we're having people over all the time. We got tons of these really nice big wine glasses when we got married from our registry, and this is why 
when people fulfill things off your registry, it's so important that they mark that they fulfilled it for you if they happened to find a cheaper price and bought it somewhere else. Because we ended up having three people gift us these and some of them got them cheaper from another store and we didn't have the receipt, we couldn't return them, blah, blah, blah. We have millions of these glasses now. Realistically, we really only need four, I'm thinking. So I'm only gonna let myself hold on to four of a specific shape glass. Oh, these were the, the my boys' little glasses from our Halloween on the high seas Disney cruise. So I'm gonna, they're really dirty. I'm gonna wash them. I'm gonna let them drink out of this tonight. Yeah, I'm not gonna let them know where it's from. I'm gonna see if they happen to remember where it's from because they were only three when we went on the cruise. Why do we have so many freaking wine glasses? These are like outdoor whiskey glasses that are insulated. Um, another thing from Brewmate. Okay, and super quick, I changed my mind. I actually am keeping six of these smaller wine glasses just for the rare, but could potentially happen in the future occasion that we have a couple people over. And we have more than enough space, so I don't feel guilty about it. I decided to dedicate this lower cabinet to all the kids' stuff. That way, my boys can get their own cups for water, set their own plates at the table, put things away. They have easy access and reach to it, so I think this will work out great. I ordered these clear drawer organizers off of Amazon, and I'm going to use them in a few of my drawers to help them stay tidier in the future. This is probably my most random drawer in my kitchen. It has my oven mitts, my cleaning rags, and then rubber bands, scrub brushes, markers, tape, lighters. I, there's really no rhyme or reason. So I'm hoping that having these drawer organizers helps give it somewhat of a rhyme or reason. Now to the kitchen utensil drawer. Unfortunately, the clear drawer organizers aren't long enough to fit most of the utensils, so I'm only able to put in three of those organizers in here. And then the rest of the utensils, I'm just going to line up vertically, but you can still clearly see what everything is, and it's not just a jumble. I didn't organize this one on camera because I actually organized this one roughly two, three weeks ago because it was just so out of control at that point that I had to do this one singularly at that time. But we have all of our silverware, adult silverware here, kid silverware here. This is the apple cutter that I already showed you. And this, I really love this. I got it at Walmart. It came as a whole set like this, but these are all measuring cups in green. I'm not a huge fan of the color, but I like just this as a whole. But all the green ones are measuring cups and all the gray ones are measuring spoons. But what I really like about them is it is magnetic. So it helps keep everything together and it sits up perfectly straight. I especially love just the magnetic feature of everything because everything stays nicely put together. If it were to tip over for whatever reason, it's not falling all over the place. It's not getting messy. Everything stays together, which I really love. I wish I could stack it like this, but then it wouldn't close. So I just have them separated like that. Okay, I'm going to test these ones out. I got these at the Dollar Tree. You get two of these larger ones for a dollar, and then you get three of these smaller ones for a dollar. So I'm gonna see how these work compared to the clear ones you saw earlier. So first, I'm gonna put all these straws here. Also note, I'll have these linked below, but these are the best biodegradable straws out there. Most biodegradable straws are like this, where it's paper kind of wrapped up, and they're really annoying and gross to drink out of. I would rather use no straws. These are the best biodegradable straws because they feel and look like plastic, but they are not plastic. They are eco-friendly, 
but still work like plastic straws. So I love these. This is what I use nowadays instead of the nose Frida on my two year old. My twins used to get ear infections all the time and so I bought this to see if I could see if they have an ear infection or not before we spent a million dollars on going to a pediatrician and long story short, I'm not a doctor. I don't know how to, how to see if someone has an ear infection. So getting rid of that. Oh, we got this too. Ear check, didn't, didn't work. It looks like, I must have forgotten to vacuum this one out. It looks not that clean. Oh, and I found the right piece. sure if there's really any way for it to look nice. I don't have that much stuff that goes in here. Cause I use, per, I use parchment paper on pretty much everything, cooking, baking, etc. I don't use Reynolds wrap or aluminum foil for cooking or baking. I use this for basically pizza storage. I wrap pizza in this so that it can go into lunch boxes. So really this is all I have. This is everything that I am donating. I still need to organize it and group it together in a fashion that makes it easy to donate. I have to go pick up my kids from preschool soon, even though I'm not quite done decluttering and organizing my entire kitchen. I know Marie Kondo wants us to do everything in one run, but I, I, I'm out of time. I, what, do you, what do you want me to do, Marie? But I'm still so excited with all that was accomplished today. Let's take a look at the before and afters of all the cabinets and drawers that are completed. The Tupperware mixing bowl strainer area was a mess, but now everything is nicely spaced out in its own little corner in the cabinet. The kids cabinet was just a dumping ground for our cups, but now the cups are organized and we have the kids plates in there as well as some bowls for the kids so everything is reachable for them. This was the cabinet where items literally spilled out onto me and now it is spacious. It contains my Nutribullet, my Instant Pot, so they're off the counters now. And then I just have the random hand sanitizer in the corner. This is just a miscellaneous drawer that's underneath the medicine cabinet that we're going to go over in the next Declutter With Me video. But these are the Dollar Tree storage bins. I actually think, you know what? Comment below, which one you like more? Do you like the Dollar Tree little organizers more? Or do you like these clear organizers more? I actually think I might like the Dollar Tree ones more, but let me know what you think in the comments below. I used to keep two utensil holders on the counter at all times and they were filled to the max and now I just have this one and any duplicate items or items that I don't use daily go in the drawer right next to it. Another overflowing cabinet that has now just been pared down to the essentials. Then we have our pots and pans. These were the ones that I use pretty much every day in some way. And then I have my secondary backup ones that I'm just not ready to let go of yet. My salad spinner, crock pot, which I don't use the crock pot that much anymore now that I have my instant pot, but I'm still keeping it just, just in case. And then onion chopper and my waffle maker back there. Then in the plates and cups cabinet, I took out any kid related items to put into the kid cabinet and that freed up a lot of space. So I was able to consolidate from four shelves to these three. Then in the other drink cabinet, we went from what seemed like hundreds of glasses to just what I feel like we need. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some motivation to declutter your life yourself. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next video. And also I will have my decluttering and cleaning playlist floating over the screen at this point along with some other playlists and I will see you in the next video. Bye.